the $100 MBA show. And today is a Q&A weekend episode where we answer your question right here on the show. If you have a question you want to ask, just email us at contact at 100mba.net or send me a tweet on Twitter. My handle is bizrepublic, B-I-Z Republic. As always, I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. Check out our free guides over at 100mba.net slash guides. When you sign up for one free guide, you get all five guides automatically. And today is a very special Q&A weekends episode. I call upon a good friend and our lawyer, David Lizerbram. He's going to help me answer today's question because it's a bit legal. So what's today's question? Today's question comes from Reggie and Reggie asks, can I use the word New York in my product name, meaning a name of a city? Can he use it in his product name? Now, when I got this question, I was like, oh, I don't really know, honestly. But I got to answer the question. The listener asked the question, so we got to answer it. So I'm calling upon David Lizerbram from lizerbramlaw.com and the hit podcast, Products of the Mind, and our personal lawyer. I can't wait to get into today's lesson, get into today's question. Let's jump right into it, guys. Let's get down to business. Today's episode of the 100 MBA show is brought to you by Heroic Public Speaking, the live training speaking event of the year. If you want to become a better speaker, 100% guaranteed, head on over to 100mba.net slash speaking to get a massively discounted price. Nicole and I will see you there February 15 through 17 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Head on over to 100mba.net slash speaking and grab your ticket now. So let me get into the details of Reggie's question before I call upon David so we can discuss the answer to this question. So Reggie asks, if I have a company named X, would there be any legal issue to using the words X New York or any city for that matter? Specifically, would there be a problem with it printed on a product? I want to put the words in New York on my product just below my company name. However, my product has nothing at all to do with New York and it's not based there. Very interesting question, Reggie, and we're going to get into it. I sat down with my favorite attorney, David Lizabram. We've worked with David before. David is our lawyer, and we discussed this question. But I have to say, as a disclaimer, David can't give Reggie specific advice because he's not his lawyer, but he can shed some light on today's topic and give his expert opinion on today's question. Let's jump into that conversation right now. Hey, David, how you doing? Hey, Omar, good to talk to you. Awesome. Thanks, sir, uh, for joining me today on Q&A Weekends uh, to answer Reggie's question. So let me uh, talk about the question first. So we have a question here from Reggie that says, if I uh, have a company named X, would there be any legal issue to using the words X New York, as in the city New York? Uh, Specifically, would there be a problem if it was printed on a product? Reggie wants to put it in words, the word New York. Uh, on the product uh, that he sells, uh, along with his company name. However, his product has nothing to do with New York, and it's not based there. His company's not based there. So uh, I have no idea how to answer this question. So, so, um, I, but I need to answer because my, you know, the audience uh, has spoken, and I have to uh, help our audience out. So, uh, is there anything that you can help us out with this, uh, David? Yeah, absolutely. So two kind of thoughts came into my head when you asked me this question. Uh, Two basic issues. There's trademark law and then there's sort of general business law stuff. Um, And I'm just going to hit both of those. So let's talk about the trademark side of this question. A trademark is anything that identifies you or your business as the source of your products or services, whatever you're doing. So in this case, it's a, uh, you know, it's a product. The problem is that On the trademark side, geographic terms, of which New York is certainly a geographic term, are very difficult to protect. So I don't know what the X New York is. I don't know what the X is. If the X portion of your brand name is very distinctive and unique, then you probably can own and protect that, by which I mean you can prevent anybody else from using that part of your brand name to compete with you. But uh, the New York side of it uh, makes it a little bit more difficult if that's really how you're expressing the brand because, you, number one, you don't we, – anybody who's making products in New York or around New York needs to be able to communicate that. That's just kind of fair. It makes sense. Um, and second of all, this could be what's called geographically misdescriptive. Mm. Basically, the trademark office and, and, you know, or a court might look at it like you're misleading your customers. 
because like you said, it's really has nothing to do with New York and it's not based there. And the other side of that is the general business law. And I don't know where Reggie's business is based. Uh, I don't know if it's in the U.S. or elsewhere. Um, but, you know, if you're in the U.S. Or, or if you're in another country, your your local trade commission might have an issue with that, meaning um, you might be violating some kind of consumer law by – suggesting to your customers that your product comes from New York when really it comes from Timbuktu or anywhere else. Right. Now, again, it kind of depends on the type of product. So let's say, for example, Omar, you're like, hey, <clears throat> David, I want to open a New York style pizza shop, but I want to open it in San Diego, California, where you and I both live. Mm -hmm. So that's not a problem because nobody is going to think you know, we're that, in New York. <laughs> right. Nobody's going to think all of a sudden I got suddenly transported to New York or even, you know, they're probably not going to think that you have the pizzas made in New York and shipped to you rather than have, making them fresh. So, you know, as long as you're not deceiving people about that kind of thing, you see this all the time, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Brooklyn style bagels or I don't know. I'm just thinking about New York right now. Maybe I'm just hungry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, so there is a bit of common sense here, right? If it's a type of product where it would be attractive for it to be from New York, like let's say it's a fashion type product, and, right. you know, New York seems more fashionable than, you know, Des Moines, Iowa, where you're really in, you know, then you might have a deceptiveness issue there that might run into problems with the trade laws and also potentially on the trademark side. Mm -hmm. So you got two potential issues here. It's not a complete red light because it might be different depending on the context and the type of product and how you're communicating to your customers. But generally speaking, if I have to give a very basic rule, I would say to avoid using the names of geographic places in your products specifically when that's not where the product is coming from. I love that. I love the the <laughs> your insights on this. I also just want to throw in a little uh, insight of my own here and you can comment on it. But I find it that when you complicate your name, whether it's a product or the name of your business, with geographical terms or anything that people might think it's something else, it makes it very hard for you to be found on Google. It, it, it's very it's very bad for SEO. It's very bad also for uh, people just word of mouth knowing or remembering. It's just not unique enough. You don't understand what's happening uh, or understand um, what exactly this brand is conveying. Um, so my general business advice to Reggie would be, um, see if you can just use your own unique brand and not worry about the geographical term, because if your product is great, if your product can stand on its own legs, then that's all you need. You don't really need to, um, use the crutch or of the glamour of New York or something like that. Uh, do you know what I'm saying here? I think that makes a lot of sense. When I talk to clients or friends, whatever the case may be, and they're coming up with a brand name. Um, I usually tell them that you want to have all three legs of the stool. So one of those is legal, right? Making sure that you're not violating any laws, you're not going to get sued, that you can own and protect this brand name from a trademark perspective. That's number one. But the other two legs of the stool are equally important, and they are marketing slash branding and then SEO. Um, if you're if it's difficult for somebody to find your product, it doesn't matter that you've got a rock solid trademark filing and all that's done because nobody will find you. And same thing. With the marketing and branding side, if it's sort of confusing, um, again, it's not really going to help you that you've you know worked out all the legal details. So you really want to have all three of those things figured out. And very often, a geographic name, unless you know it's a brick and mortar business and you're you know you're based in that location, that's one thing. But um, generally speaking, it's it's something you want to avoid. Thanks, David. I really appreciate your take on this. I wouldn't have be able to answer this question without you. So thanks for guesting on today's Q&A weekends. And guys, make sure you check out David's awesome, awesome podcast. It's rocking iTunes right now. It's called Products of the Mind. So check that out. Subscribe. Give him some love on iTunes with a rating and review. Thanks, David. Thanks a lot. It was a lot of fun. Today's episode of The $100 MBA Show is sponsored by Heroic Public Speaking. This live training event from February 15th to 17th in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, will guarantee you'll become a better public speaker. Whether on stage, on the mic, on video, in an interview, or pitching to investors, the best skill an entrepreneur can have is the power of clear communication, and that includes public speaking. Nicole and I will be there, and we'd love to see you there with us. To get your massively discounted ticket, head on over to 100mba.net slash speaking. 
And when you purchase your ticket with that link, forward your receipt over to contact at 100mba.net and we'll hook you up with a bonus, a masterclass from Michael and Amy, the founders of Royal Public Speaking, on on-camera presence when it comes to webinars. Again, head on over to 100mba.net slash speaking and we'll see you there. That was really cool how we did today's Q&A episode. I really loved it. And awesome insights from David. Thanks again, David. Check out David Lizerbram's website at lizerbramlaw.com and make sure you check out his podcast, Products of the Mind. I love his podcast. It has become a hit success in its launch. Just search Products of the Mind on iTunes and make sure you subscribe. Guys, that wraps up today's lesson. I hope you loved it. I hope you enjoyed it. Guys, tomorrow we have a very special guest teacher lesson tomorrow with John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneur on Fire. John is going to teach you how to set smart goals. This is going to be a great episode because John's going to show you how to set those goals you set out for the beginning of the year and actually accomplish them. I'm so pumped. I can't wait for that episode tomorrow. So make sure you hit subscribe so you get it automatically. I'll see you guys then. But before that, I got to leave you with this. It's always better to ask and find out before you take a step forward, especially when it comes to legal matters like this. I love the fact that Reggie asked this question. He makes sure that he's doing the right thing before he makes any choices or invests any money into his product or brand. I'm not saying question every decision, but some decisions will affect a lot of things that you do, especially when it comes to your products and services. This is a great example, producing products with the word New York on it. So save yourself some time and money and make sure you ask the right questions. And guys, we're always here for you. If you need any help, ask away. Send it over at contact at 100mba.net. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow in that amazing guest teacher episode with John Lee Dumas. I'll see you then, guys. Take care. 